Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the free accounting software users to show you guys how to finalize your payroll using free accounting software. So I've just uh, entered a few example um, payrolls here. Um, status is created. I haven't lodged them. Um, you, you would probably have lodged um, yours by this stage. Um, but anyway, I'm just, I'll just talk through the, the process here. So um, to finalize your uh, payroll, basically on the pay slip, there is an indicator called final pay. So if you're looking at the transactions list for the payroll, and um, there's just one employee in this, but there could be more, um, there's a column that says finan final pay. And in this case, it says false, um, which is the normal um, thing it says by default. However, if you go into the pay slip, um, I'll just scroll back up to the top so you see that that's the normal pay slip. But if you scroll down to the to what's the pay pay event info, which is what goes to the ATO, you'll see there's an indicator here called final pay for financial year. Um, it says no. You change it to yes, and then save. Now everything else about the pay slip is exactly the same. So if you're doing a payroll in June, your last pay, and you know it's going to be the final one for the year, you can just simply set all of these to yes and then lodge it as per normal. And then that will let the ATO know that those that information is um, tax ready. Okay. So when the employee um, logs into their um, portal with the ATO um, to do their tax, they will see, uh, and this example is for a prior financial year, but they will see that that year has been marked as tax ready. Um, and in this example, they've got a, um, uh, the next financial year's payrolls have already started to come through and they're flagged as year to date. Okay, so, um, but let's say you've done your June pay and you didn't set this to final okay so um, um, that would be no um, we at the time you didn't know it was going to be the final or um, or you just uh, forgot to do that that's okay um, then what you do is you have to do what's called an update event so I'll show you how to do that so you create a new batch and you might call it something like 2021 20, final um, um, finalization maybe okay uh, now the the date you want everything to be 30th of June okay so the start date for the pay slips and the end date for the pay slips is all 30th of June okay save that then you go to the transactions and add a new pay slip. Okay. Um, now add the employee, and that and that's it. You don't have to add a line for the employee or anything there. You just let it bring in the year to date figures. Um, I'll point out here that the start date is 30 June and the end date is 30 June. Um, they're supposed to be the same. If you don't make them the same, it will, they'll give you a warning, but they actually still accept the um, lodgement. Um, now under pay event info, you come down here and final pay for financial year, you put to yes. Okay. And then you save. And then when you go back to the transactions list, you can see uh, all the pay slips in this case just one and the f it says final pay true then you go to the uh, single touch payroll lodgement page um, and uh, I haven't filled in enough information here to actually do a lodgement and it's all fake info anyway but you would um, tick the box to agree to the declaration um, select your machine credential if you're using a local file or um, if you're um, using a hosted one, you'll have the software subscription ID there. Um, put in your password. And in this case, um, it's called an update event. So there is no um, 
gross or tax withheld on this pay and that's what makes it an update event so instead of clicking the lodge button that you normally click, you click this update button and that sends it to the ATO um, and you know that will finalize um, the payroll okay so technically speaking that's all there is um, to it but I want to give you another couple tips on um, on this um, and how to get it right so first thing I want to say is that um, um, it goes everything goes by the pay day okay so so if I go to the batch here um, and this is um, our last actual pay in the financial year and we put payment date 30th of June now if I just was to edit this for instance and change the date to 1 July um, so you know the employee worked throughout June but they were paid on 1 July um, that makes it a July pay not a June pay which takes it into the 2022 financial year or the next financial year so if we go down to these um, year-to-date amounts it's just the current pay okay um, so this is confusing a lot of people because they think that you know well because the employee worked in June it's that's the June pay no that's it goes by payday okay so um, anyway um, I'll just change that back to 30 June um, we do that go back down to these year-to-date totals and they update with the um, correct totals anyway I won't save that change just wanted to point out um, it goes by the date of payment okay um, another thing I want to point out is there are there is at least one check that you really should do to make sure you're lodging the correct information so if I go back to the batch list and I click on our 2021 finalization um, this will list all of your employees um, I guess one advantage of doing the zero dollar pay slips as a separate year-end thing is that um, you can list all of your employees that you've paid any time throughout the year and and put them on that um, um, batch the it will add up and give you um, a total down the bottom so year-to-date gross 14850 so a good check to do is go to uh, your business and run either the income and expenditure or the payroll summary or both let me just go to the payroll summary and run that for the financial year and then um, you know you can go and check that the um, gross adds up now in this case it doesn't so um, um, if you notice before the um, the employee was on like about 14,000 this is 20 so you'd go oh right well why is that and then you go into it and you say oh there was you know this is the employee we're doing but you know you might have had an employee that did a week of work in July 2020 and you forgot about them so you know um, so you know in this case we forgot to add that employee so what we can do go back to the batch and um, go into here add a new pay slip for the employee that we forgot and also mark this one as final and save and then we go to the transactions we can see our two employees and that the total agrees to the report um, also double check that all of your employees actually um, all the pay slips have the uh, final pay flag set to true um, okay so another thing um, that you should do as part of this check is if you are um, if you have a local file there is sort of no bank rec in it um, but if you have a Basel hosted business then 
there's a bank reconciliation. So you should do the bank rec to, to make sure that um, if there was a payment out of the bank account for payroll, it agrees to uh, what was put into the system or, you know, vice versa. There's nothing missed and they both, and, and the software agrees with your bank account. Um, and that's, that's an important check as well. Okay, I am um, going to leave it there, but I'll um, do another video on a um, on a uh, on one um, other issue um, that often comes up with uh, year-end finalization, and that is that um, if people get duplicate um, um, income statements. So, say for example. Um, for the financial year, the employee might have two, um, might have a duplicated um, income statements. So um, I'll show you how to fix that in it, but I'll do that in a separate video because it can be quite um, a little bit more complicated. Um, hopefully you won't have to worry about that though, and then this is all you'll need to um, uh, finalize your payroll. Okay, I hope the video has been useful and thanks for watching.